Welcome to a supercut for the Things You Missed series. Today, we'll be going through all parts of Alphail, Brace of the Halig Tree. If this is your first supercut, let me quickly address why I'm doing this so you don't need to worry that I'm just regurgitating old content for the views. That is not at all what this channel is about. I just want to make the guides as clear and fun as possible for you. So I realized, why am I making you watch three or four videos for certain areas when I could bundle them all into one big video for your convenience and pleasure? Hence, the supercut. So if at any point throughout this video I talk about in the next part, for example, I've just left that in because without it, the video wouldn't sync up and you may have missed some vital footage. Now that you know that, please sit back, relax and enjoy. We're covering Elphile, Brace of the Halleck Tree. This is an incredibly tough area, so make sure you are fully prepared before you enter in and try to tackle this zone. You've got exploding enemies and clean rot knights all over the place. Loads of bosses and mini bosses scattered all over the area as well, including no less than two Erd Tree avatars. And right at the bottom, you've also got four or five royal revenants. However, hopefully this video will help you get through the area without too much trouble. And also, of course, we'll show you every single item along the way. So, if you like the sound of that, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thank you. As I've been introducing this video to you, we've been coming down this walkway, killing all the soldiers in our way. As you've probably already seen a couple of times, be careful for the soldiers that glow, because they can and will explode. Also, off in one of these side rooms is an item I believe I accidentally already collected off camera. So make sure you go and grab that, it's very hard to miss. It's the first room you come across on your left. And then, once you've taken everyone out along this first walkway, we'll drop down these stairs and finally loot the first item for the video, which will be these five lightning great bolts. Now I'm going to backtrack, head into this room and then up the stairs. Out here, once you've taken out this soldier as well, you can grab the smithing stone eight, and then very carefully jump along the branch here and you can walk along this platform into the tower and grab the Mikkelen Knight's sword. Now we'll go down the ladder and we'll start trying to take out the first Erd Tree avatar. Do not try and cheese him with any kind of ranged attack from the tower here because he will just spam this same attack at you over and over again and in a ranged battle he will probably win every time. So now let's jump down and try and fight him head on and get wrecked. So let's respawn and we'll try that again, shall we? You meet me back here now, absolutely destroying the Earth Tree Avatar with Aghil's Flame. However, he barely clings onto life and starts to return the favor. After a few very intense moments, we finally get in one final attack and take him down. And we are subsequently rewarded with the Rotten Staff. You can also grab the Newman's Rune from here. And now that I've grabbed my souls back, let's take a look at the Rotten Staff. As you can see, it has the same Ash of War as the Staff of the Avatar, the Erd Tree Slam, which is the most powerful slam ability in the game. And there are more butt slams than you'd think. I thought a game containing one butt slam was quite good. This contains like four different butt slams. As I say, with the Erd Tree Slam being the best of all the butt slams. As you can see, the Rotten Staff is purely strength and deck scaling, as opposed to the Staff of the Avatar that has faith scaling as well. However, the Rotten Staff also has Scarlet Rot build up. So both are a fantastic option if you want to use that beautiful butt slam ability. Now that we're done checking out that weapon, we can head to the end of the path just here and grab one of only eight somber ancient dragon smithing stones in the game. So make sure you do not miss out on this. Now let's head up the stairs and very carefully take out this Crystallion. Even once you've staggered them, the Crystallions that you'll find scattered around this area have an insane amount of health, so be super careful as you're taking them out. And once this one's dead, you can go ahead and loot the Somber Smithing Stone 9. Now I'm going to bait out and take out this Clean Rot Knight before we jump over to the other balcony. Now that he's dead, we can get a Golden Rune 10, and I believe I just got crazy lucky with this loot, getting both his gauntlets and his greaves. Be careful as you head into this room, as there is another Clean Rot Knight waiting to attack you. There's also a Smithing Stone 7 just on the right hand side here. 
and once you've taken him out, we can head outside and start dealing with all these soldiers out here. A lot of them, I think five or six total, will start coming up the stairs and trying to take you out. So be very cautious as you're clearing up this area. Now, before we head any further that way, we're going to do a 180 and head out the other end of the room. There's a few ways we can go here and we will be exploring every single area. But firstly, I'm going to be heading straight forward. And as soon as we take out the soldier with the great shield, there'll be a load more enemies waiting for us in the room just to the right. As you're taking them all out, you can get yourself a smithing stone 7. And now we'll carry on to the end of this path with yet more soldiers that we need to take out. And then you can use a stone sword key and gain access to the triple rings of light spell. This guy's minding his own business and isn't even going to attack us. I'm going to kill him anyway. And, and I get a smithing stone 7 for doing so, so that's quite cool. Back in the room where we took out the two clean rot knights, head out of the northwest door where you cleared out all these soldiers and we'll start heading down the stairs. There's a couple of soldiers waiting you around the corner here and you'll see probably the most terrifying section of this whole area now. There's no less than three soldiers manning massive ballistas, another Erdtree avatar boss and two souped up royal knights all waiting to mess up your <laughs> So backtrack very slightly, jump off over the balcony here and down this ledge. In this room is two more clean rot knights and three or four soldiers patrolling around as well. So you'll need to be very careful as you're taking them out. But once you've done so, you can then head out of the room and start coming up these stairs. You'll see me here on the stairs just finishing up the last few enemies. Then we'll turn around and we can start taking out the soldiers on the ballista. You can grab the smithing stone 8 on this corpse whilst you're at it. And then there's one more soldier minding his business, just staring off into the distance. So let's murder him as well. And then you can loot the Halig Tree soldier ashes. Now we're going to take out the soldiers on the other two ballista down there. So they're no longer a problem. Somehow another guy that I completely missed earlier comes up and tries to ambush me. I don't think so, mate. Now that all the soldiers are dead, we've just got the Avatar and the two Royal Knights to deal with. At this point in the guide, I completely forgot the two Royal Knights were here. So I summon my Mimic Tear, and I think this is going to be easy. You are so dead, mate. I jump down to finish him off and get absolutely obliterated. So let's try that again and approach it a little bit more cautiously. You meet me back here now, directly in front of the Erdtree Avatar. What I've done is I've gone around the exact same route we took before, taken out all the enemies, and then I've ran back round to the front again so I could loot this epic item. And it was just an Arteria leaf, so that was bloody pointless. But this time, we're going to do things very, very differently. I will summon the Mimic Tear to draw the aggro, hug the left-hand side, and start running towards the entrance that he was blocking just behind him. You can also grab the Sacramental Bud whilst you're on the way if you want to and directly behind this boss is a sight of grace. So let's rest up, grab this smithing stone 6, and I'll meet you back here once I've come back from being summoned as a hunter to help someone else in their world. And here we are, we're behind the Erdtree avatar, and I'm ready for him this time. We're going to start off the fight by absolutely annihilating him with Aghil's flame, though he does manage to get in a very good swing and chunk down nearly half my health. Now, I was hoping that he would be stuck and wouldn't be able to come into this room. However, he can. So this fight is going to be a bit more butt-clenching than I first thought. We managed to pull off another very nice Aghil's Flame. However, once again, he deals a tremendous amount of damage and knocks us out of it. So there's going to be a little bit of running around, dodging his attacks and healing up now. And finally, I managed to pull off the full fire breath combo, deal over 5,000 damage to him. And with his last breath, he knocks me down and does another really decent chunk of damage. But luckily, he also dies at the same time. And we're rewarded with a load of runes and a Lord's Rune as well. And now, just because of stupid pride, I decide to try and take out the two Royal Knights. It doesn't go very well, so we won't be trying that again. They don't drop anything good anyway, so let's leave them and continue into the next area, shall we? I meet you now back at the site of Grace. Rest up, level up, do whatever you need to do, and then head through this doorway with me. On the left-hand side, you will find 
three crystallions waiting for you. I initially try to tackle them with lots of Ag Heal's Flame and subsequently get very quickly destroyed. So I'm going to change up my build and actually use one of Garank's spells. I've never used them before and the Stone of Garank looks particularly enticing to me. These guys are made of crystal. You need to break them as quick as possible. Surely lobbing giant boulders at them is going to do exactly that, right? Oh, right. Oh, how right I was. Four, just four direct hits from the Stone of Garank, and they are shattered and now susceptible to every single attack. This spell trivializes these guys and makes this much more manageable. So now that they've all been shattered and obliterated, we can come back to where they were, open up this chest, and we're treated to the Rotten Crystal Sword which, as with the Rotten Staff that we found earlier, is pretty much the exact same as the Crystal Sword, just with slightly reduced base stats, but also inherent Scarlet Rot. Now we can duck underneath these roots, behind this giant pot, and grab a Hero's Rune 5. Now I'm going to do a bit of parkour and get right on top of this root, feel really really cool for about 2 seconds, realise there's nothing up here, and leave again. So we'll head through the broken wall now and out of this room. And we now come to about five minutes of just killing lots and lots of kindreds of rot. There's a few fully grown ones and lots of baby ones, but you cannot underestimate even one of them. Even the little baby ones are so powerful. Combined with the fact that you cannot run and you will be perpetually infected with scarlet rot makes this probably my most hated area in the game so i'm gonna cut most of the footage out for you because no one needs to suffer through this more than once and good luck as you're doing it yourself just like with the lake of rot the flame cleanse me spell will really help but even then this is still a real bitch of an area there's no loot worth mentioning so honestly you could just try and sprint through it if you've got something like the Quick Step or the Bloodhound Step Ash of War. Once you've done here, be very careful as you're walking along these precariously thin routes. And once you get over to the other side, you can grab a Golden Rune 10 in this room here. And the next thing you want to do is go down this ladder and light the Sight of Grace. We'll come back and finish up this area, but there's a crazy hard boss fight. So make sure you light this checkpoint first. I'm just going to stick my head out of the sewer here and check out the next area. This is what we'll be covering during part two of the area. So for now, let's head back up the ladder and we'll come up this hill towards the northwest. Be careful as a kindred of rot is waiting for you. And once he's dead, you'll be able to come into this next area. Here, you can grab a great grave glove wart, but be very careful because once you get close enough to the center of this pool, the strongest putrid tree spirit in the game will spawn. So, now that he has absolutely wrecked my face, and will complete the rest of Elphael in part two, the area where I have just been obliterated by this guy is actually very important to Millicent's questline. So, if you want to complete her questline, you do unfortunately have to kill him. So, try, try, try again. I'm sure you've got this. Good luck. We're back today with part two of Elphael Brace of the Halig Tree. And I meet you now during one of my many, many attempts to take out the last and strongest putrid tree spirit in the game. And of course, if you're joining us and thinking, whoa, 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 where are you? What are we doing? I'm so confused. Make sure you go back and watch part one. Link, of course, will be in the description. Now that he's finally dead, you'll be rewarded with a poxy amount of runes and a golden seed which by this point in the game, you probably don't even need. So you may be thinking to yourself, oh my god, what a crappy reward to a very hard boss. However, the main reward is the fact that you now have access to the end of Millicent's questline. I'll cover her questline in full during her own NPC questline video. But just a quick heads up, there are two options here, one to challenge her and one to help her. This is one of the longest and one of the hardest quest lines in the game. So don't ruin it for yourself by challenging her. You've got this far, help her complete her mission. If you opt to challenge her, you'll be rewarded with Millicent's prosthesis. 
and you can only get this if you beat her. It's a talisman that boosts your dexterity by 5 and raises your attack power with successive attacks, so it is an incredible talisman. However, you lock yourself out of the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, the Unalloyed Golden Needle, a somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone, and the only way in the game to revert the Frenzied Flame should you have embraced the Frenzied Flame granted by the Three Fingers earlier on in the game. So please, unless it's New Game Plus and you've already done this end to the quest line, don't challenge her, always protect her. Now that that rant's out the way, I'll meet you back at the Drainage Channel site of Grace and we'll start to progress through the next zone of this area. Hug the wall heading along these branches and then when you get near the end, you can drop down onto this platform. Then you want to jump off to the left onto another branch and start heading up this next platform. Do a 180, jump on this branch and finally we can get on top of this building. This is a massive area with loot all over the place, so feel free to do it in a different order to me, but I'll call out absolutely everything that you can grab just to make sure you don't miss anything. So now that we're at the end of this branch and I've grabbed my souls back, ignore them, I definitely didn't fall off and die here a minute ago. We can drop down here onto this platform, jump over onto the roof, and now we're going to fall down off the northern side of the roof onto this balcony. Take out the Kindreds of Rot, and then you can loot the Aeonian Butterfly. Now come inside the building and be super careful because there is loads more baby and adult kindreds waiting to mess your up. Facing towards the southwest, we will be taking that lift down eventually, but for now, let's head out the northeastern entrance, and we're going to head left. I'll skip a large majority of this because it's just minutes and minutes of me taking out lots of kindreds of rot. You can get yourself a Ghost Glove Wart 7 just here. And then further down, once you've taken out this clump, there is also a Ghost Glove Wart 8 and a Newman's Rune. Further down still, right towards the edge here, as we're taking out these last few kindreds, there is even more Glove Wart still, and more importantly, the Ghost Glove Wart Pickers Bell Bearing 3. Once you've grabbed all of the loot, Head back towards the building, and before we go the other way, we're going to take this ladder up and jump through the hole in the roof. Loads of kindreds and lesser kindreds will start spamming the pest threads attack at you. Be very careful, it is such a pain this area. Once you manage to deal with them all though, you can get the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman from this chest. Now we'll jump back down into the room we were in before, and this time when we head out of the building, we'll go right. On this side is a load of soldiers and royal knights, an absolute ton of them. And you're probably quite low on both HP and FP restoration items by this point. So please be really careful. Honestly, I wouldn't blame you if you just wanted to sprint through the area, grab the items and get out. I will be clearing everything up just so I can more easily show you everything. So everything you can grab in this area includes the three arteria leaf just here. There's also a load of Mikula's Lily scattered around. And then right at the end, once we've taken out the Great Bro Wielding Knight and the Spear Wielding Knight, you can also loot a Hero's Rune 5. This side of the building is arguably much, much harder than the Kindreds of Rot side, and also rewards you with some pretty pathetic loot, so I wouldn't blame you if you didn't even want to come here, honestly. But now we're done here, there's one last item we want to grab before we head down the lift. So I'm going to once again climb up the ladder and then you can follow my route as we're dropping down these series of platforms and branches and just here you can jump over onto the side of the building and grab yourself a nascent butterfly. And now as I'm dropping down I'm just realising you could have actually grabbed this earlier by just using the door. <laughs> but anyway we're here now, we've got the last item, it was a very unimportant one. So let's head down the lift and light the sight of grace at the Hallig Tree roots, and prepare for a very, very agonizing boss fight. There's a few more things we're going to do before we head toward the southwestern end of the room and through the boss fog, because I want to delay this fight as long as possible. So we'll head over here to the southeast first, grabbing a load of Aeonian butterflies, along with the Traveler's armor set. Then, once you've had your fun grabbing all the loot, start coming up the stairs here and you can take a lift up this unlocks a shortcut of sorts and brings you to the top of the tower where we jumped off and fought the first erd tree avatar 
I'm not really sure the point of the lift, considering that we have just lit a sight of grace. We don't really need, like, I don't, I'm not sure where that shortcut's taking us. But anyway, I could no longer delay the inevitable. Let's go back down, head into the boss room, and start trying to tackle Melania, the Blade of Mikula. And I was really excited. I thought, oh damn, I've got pretty good at this game. I managed to actually push her into phase two during my first attempt. I thought this is going fantastic. And then in comes Waterfowl Dance to absolutely ruin my day. So let's try again and die even quicker than we did the first time. And I think for now, I will just shut up and let you bask in the pain of this death montage as I attempt to fight and defeat Melania, the Blade of Mikula. I'm going to jump back in again, actually, at the end of this attempt that you see me trying right now. Because this one was particularly heartbreaking for me. Because of the fact that she's in phase two. You can see I'm doing pretty well. We've got many healing items left. She's on about 10% health. I'm on full health. And just to add insult to injury and rub the salt into the wound even further, we die at the same time. I beat her! What? And most bosses, if you die at the same time as them, their death animation is quite quick and it counts. It didn't even count! I have to do it again! Oh god! That was agony! So, we'll die one final time. And now you meet me back here on attempt number, I don't know, nine, maybe? And I finally, finally managed to beat her. And we are rewarded with Melania's great rune and the remembrance of the rock goddess. God, that fight is infuriating. So now, let me recollect myself and I'll meet you back here again for the next part of the video. At this point, I'm going to come back to earlier on in Elfail and wrap up a few items that I overlooked in part one, then finish off by grabbing some incredibly rare, incredibly well hidden items that we need to complete a couple of quest lines, and we'll go check out the lower level and try and deal with all the royal revenants. So firstly, halfway down these stairs that we came to right at the start of the first video, you can hop onto this balcony, jump off over to the left hand side, and once you've very carefully taken out this soldier and this clean rot knight, you can head into the room just here and loot the spirit ashes for clean rot knight Finley. Now jump off the left hand side onto this platform and then once you've taken out all the enemies in the area, we need to get up on this branch. As you can see, I don't quite successfully make the jumps from here. What you need to do is head into this room and as we're climbing up this branch, I'm going to pause here and show you two incredibly important items that I don't grab until much later on, but you can get them right now. You can either continue heading towards the top of this branch, or you can come the way that you see me going now, where you just head towards the top of the platform, and inside this room, in the chest, you can get a somber ancient dragon smithing stone, and then at the end, right where it connects to the branch that I'm on right now, you'll see a seedbed curse. So make sure you grab them two items as well, now we'll cut the footage back here and also grab the five old fangs. Now you don't have to come here and do this bit later like I did. So once you've grabbed them two items from up above and the five old fangs, we're done here, so we'll move into the next part. You meet me here now, stood on this ledge. So what I'm going to do is skip forward in time and show you exactly how to get here because stupid old me didn't click record. So I'm going to teleport much further in time to a far stronger version of my character that's already completed the game to show you the run for how to get to this balcony. I meet you at the prayer room site of grace and just follow down these stairs and hop down the same platforms as me. Eventually you'll be outside of the room with the two clean rot knights in it and you can jump off the edge of the balcony here and in no time at all you will be in the exact right place that you need to be just here. Now head down the stairs into this incredibly dark room 
and round the corner you'll find the seedbed curse. This is the fifth and final seedbed curse that you need to complete the Dung Eaters questline, so stay tuned for that video coming very soon. Now we'll drop off the ledge and start destroying these crystallions with the stones of Garank. And once all three of them are dead, it allows us to loot this somber smithing stone 9 here, and also a pickled turtleneck. You'll now find that we're also on the bottom floor, surrounded by a load of royal revenants. So I'm gonna summon my mimic. So I'm gonna summon my mimic tear to help me out here. You can also go in this room and grab a legendary item, which is a Lord's Rune. And now, using the power of the healing spell, let's start clearing out this area. Once this first one's dead, I'm gonna start out by heading southeast. And as soon as you start to head into this room on your right hand side, another one will spawn. So get ready to turn around and take him out as soon as you've looted this three beast blood. Again, heal is gonna absolutely trivialize him. And then once he's dead, we'll head south to take out this next one. Now, unfortunately, I get summoned to another world as a hunter when I'm right in the middle of killing this guy, which really winds me up because when I come back to my world, my mimic tier has gone, he's back on full health and he kills me. However, whilst we are here, in the world of Catnap the Snap. <laughs> Catnap the Snap. What a name. I'm going to leave part of this footage in because I have a very tasty fight with the invader. I somehow accidentally find this awesome room that's hidden above the Erd Tree avatar that we fought earlier. And he's hiding in here. And I just mess him up with the Cursed Blood Slice. He dies, we get a rune arc, and we get to go back to our world. Unfortunately, as I say, I then get obliterated by the Royal Revenant. So I'll cut the video here, and I'll meet you back right at the bottom of the area, where all of the Royal Revenants are. I'll turn off the item, so I stop being summoned to help people for now, as we go through and try and take out all these Royal Revenants. You meet me now right at the northwestern end, and I've just grabbed a smithing stone from this corpse, and you see me here just in time to summon my Mimic Tear and die. So let's leg it back through all of the enemies and all the areas that we've already visited. And finally, we'll be back here where I was summoned to the other person's world. This time, because I didn't get summoned, we're able to easily take out the Royal Revenant before finally being able to loot four Aeonian Butterflies. We can also grab the loot from the Corpse of the Revenant, which is a Ghost Glove Wart 9. And then there's a golden rune 12 just a little bit further along before finally using a stone sword key to access this room and getting the upgraded version of Marika's scar seal, Marika's saw seal. So now that we've completed the bottom area, we have finished Alphael Brace of the Halig Tree. Congratulations, this was an incredibly tough area. That will now lead us into wrapping up the Forge of the Giants and then finally getting into the crumbling Faramazula. Thank you as always for watching, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.